for more of my memories. Hold them in flames, holds them down, separated what held them together. Sold them away to someone willing to pay a premium. Buried them underneath my feet, stuffed them somewhere I can't see. Made them look like something I don't know. Who knows why folks want to erase things? I see whole neighborhoods blighted by some sort of entity. Had it ever thought to stop and think about how we might feel, or does it know we even exist? Maybe it knows and wants to act like we don't. Wrapped us up in some sort of derogatory subhuman ghetto myth. Maybe it's fine with our ghost. Lost around this place, we once remembered just trying to find home, not attempting to haunt anything. But we can't find what we recall, what feels like yesterday. Those places that made us smile and has our laughter, sorrow, happiness, our histories trapped somewhere in them. Where is this love I'm holding on to? Who moved it and why? Perhaps those government notes that instruct us on whom to trust takes precedence over a culture, a history, a people, an ethic, over love and its preservation. Now should I be mad? Because change is the natural order of things, and it was never promised to be palatable, easy to swallow like the first kiss I remember, but can't feel no more. But it was real. Yes, it was real. Home is real. What is missing once was and still is real. Who knows why folks want to act like we are not? Who am I now without these places I remember? without my memories, but in my head, and even that's foggy at times, because there's nothing to show for what I know, because I know what I know, but who else besides me knows it was real to me, and to the people who lived, loved, yes, loved, laughed, worked, rested, watched each other's children cross the streets, borrow a cup of sugar, knew family secrets they could tell you when you got old enough to bear the truth, cut your grass because they felt like it. Knew to check on you when the summers had a pinch of hell in it. The people. These people. What happened to the people in this place? Who stopped caring about the people? But I have eyes that see. I see the dividing lines. They aren't imaginary. I see what stands and what goes, what is adored and what is adorned, what opens up and what closes down, what gets watered and what we let rot. I feel the old history lifting its way around. I hear its old thoughts sprouting out of new mouths, coded language decoded in the blink of an eye in ample silence. Where did it all come from? This ghost with its wrecking ball of a way. Let me ask you something, ghost. What are you getting out of this? Why are you laying it all to waste? Don't you know nothing new can replace what has been because what was was priceless? See, see, I got eyes that see ghosts. They see what once was beautiful being that beautiful. Yet I see people trying not to see. And it's all visible if they care to look. So take your blinders off because it's all being seen. See the city, histories torn down, stolen from where they stand, sold like they, we, never mattered. Like we somehow were never precious enough. With our memories buried somewhere beneath, in a city that appears to not all see histories as equal, tell me. If we can't find something, something that looks like our memories, something that feels like home, how are we to move forward? Back in 2011, when I was flirting with the idea of moving back to my hometown of St. Louis, Missouri, I made it my business to like go around to see what I would be getting myself into. <laughs> While the statistics regarding the black unemployment rate, crime, local government's handling of major public issues, amongst many other things, was a bit discouraging, I slowly decided that back home is where I needed to be. See, I'm from North St. Louis, from an area called College Hill, 
which was labeled no college student here via the judgmental map of St. Louis created by this Reddit user and it was published April 30th, 2014 in the St. Louis Egoist with the following caption. It's pretty damn accurate and hilarious in the most politically incorrect way. Really now. According to my Instagram feed about 121 weeks ago, I went on a ride with friend and photographer Demond Meek as he was shooting more photographs for Slum Beautiful, which are the photographs that you've seen in this presentation. We parked the car probably about, about 100 feet from the corner of a street that's bordering the old North and Walnut Park neighborhoods. We get out the car. Demond with his iPhone in hand and me with this five-star, you know, me notebook. And I was getting ready to take notes because I had a writer's block and I was hoping that I was going to grab some inspiration for the poem you all just heard. Now I remember standing closer to the corner of the street just writing down this flood of notes that kept coming to me and I was admiring this one little one-story cottage home that was directly in front of me, and then I hear this voice from behind me say, can I help you with something? Based on the aggressiveness of this woman's tone, you would have thought I knocked on her door on a Saturday afternoon while she was in the tub and I was trying to sell her something. <laughs> when I remarked that we were fine, you know, she fired back at me, what are you all doing? As she stood there with her arms all tightly crossed and made it her business to let me know that the one-story cottage that I was admiring was actually owned by a friend of hers, I, I put my pen down and I just turned around and faced her and I said, where are you from? She was not ready for that one. Well, I'm not comfortable with answering that. So I proceeded politely to let her know that I grew up in the neighborhood over and had spent many days with friends near the very street she was attempting to protect from a woman with a notebook and a man holding an iPhone. <laughs> in short, she finally walked away and I said loud enough so she could hear it that I was glad that I didn't have a hoodie on and I wasn't carrying a bag of Skittles and a sweet tea. <laughs> To say that I was irritated is putting it, putting it nicely. As Demond and I hopped back in the car and went about our way, the rudeness and the lack of decorum and her unwarranted interrogation, it just, it did something to me. Have you all ever been so mad that you just get hot? And it's like, and I was like, ooh, sorry. However, this chance encounter it, it actually got me to thinking about the importance of place, people, memories, and histories. And it actually forced me to reflect upon the pain that I felt and that I still feel while driving through my old neighborhood as I attempt to recall those pieces of my history that are now missing and are falling apart. What happens to a people when the place they remember no longer looks the same? and in some instances, treats them as strangers who have no right visiting once was what, what was precious to them. Poet and educator Lucille Clifton's poem, Why Some People Be Mad at Me Sometimes, captures exactly how I feel. They ask me to remember, but they want me to remember their memories, and I keep on remembering mine. As, a, in, as individuals in a city rich with untold histories at every turn, what does it benefit us to project a particular narrative, mostly negative, about a people and a place to the point where others within the same city feels as though that those people and those places deserve to have their histories erased? From a branding and strategic perspective, isn't it counterproductive to remove or lay waste to what makes us unique. I don't care how many think pieces come out about our city, we are the advocates. I'm a firm believer that respect for all people in this city, their histories and memories, has the ability to curb population sprawl, reinstill pride in those who have been maligned, and may end up being the most cost-effective PR decision ever. 
Ultimately, we must ask ourselves, are we courageous enough in this city to see each other's memories and histories as valuable, valid, and worthy of preserving? And if not, what is our payoff? And in the long run, is it worth it? Thank you all for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, Damon Meek.